Um, I'll do the best I can to see your hands uh, as they come up, and I'll point in your direction like an auctioneer, and uh, we'll try to start from the front and work back. Uh, I have a lot of trouble seeing the back room because of the lights, so um, you might have to speak up. Mark? Yes. It's over here, Debbie. You don't have to worry about it. We have people coming in line. All right. So you don't have to worry about hands or anything. The clerk oh, will just come to you. Cool. So you can <laughs> <laughs> oh, I love modern technology. <laughs> <laughs> I'm glad you got that mic. <laughs> okay. Mark and Kathy, I want to honor you very much for being here. And, you know, we're uh, honored with your Especially with the pain that you're in, Mark. Ha, it's and, temporary. Uh, Kathy, I wanted to say that yesterday, probably the most inspiring thing I heard was for you, of all people, to say it's an awesome time to be alive on the planet. Okay. And what I want to know is the, a bit of your itinerary for the media so that I know when to be watching TV uh, and listening for yeah. you, please. Thank you. Um, I learned in the last week that the media is not well, some elements of it, are not as evil as I had always envisioned. They're more like a low-class prostitute. They're in it for the ratings and the money. And if, they, if demonizing us makes them more money, then they'll demonize us. If, if exalting us uh, makes, them more, uh, or makes their ratings go up, uh, their ratings are uh, consistent with how much they can charge for their advertising. Now, with all that set aside, I'm working as diligently as I can to screen those hundreds and hundreds of calls and literally thousands of emails that are piling up. Uh, my screen flickers until it looks like I, it looks like flash bulbs going off, um, and I can't tell anymore who's who uh, as far as emails go. I, I'm only looking for certain ones. And um, our media schedule is as follows. Beginning Thursday night, we will be doing the Alan Combs of Hannity and Combs Radio Hour. That reaches about two and a half million people, and it, and it uh, comes into this uh, country by, by way of Fox uh, news and it is a uh, radio broadcast not television it's not the Hannity and Combs show this is a Alan uh, Combs of the Hannity and Combs show uh, between those are literally there's 110 that I've got booked so far of radio shows that blanket um, North America and they're with st stations radio stations and we call in, or they call us, and we do live. Uh, we do our best not to do the five and ten minute shots. We do our best to do the half hour, hour shots, because otherwise it, it gets sensationalized or the people don't understand what we're talking about. It's too much information. It's like writing the Bible on the head of a pen. It's just of no value. And um, although... Kathy has been extraordinarily successful. You're not going to hear me on any of them, except the Hannity, um, except the Alan Combs show. Uh, after that, after Thursday uh, evening show, and I have no clue um, what channels there are here, um, we are going to be working with the BBC, and we'll be working with Canadian Broadcast Corporation. I have no clue as to when the dates of the airing dates will be. Check with West. Check with the preferred network. All right. I'm going to keep I'm going to keep Wes abreast of all of this information as it comes down, and he can keep you notified through email. Um, Wes, Wes, and one other person, and uh, two other people are going to be the only ones that are really going to be able to track this thing. And since I type with two fingers and I'm answering a tele two telephones, and Kathy, bless her heart, is having to do back-to-back -back radio, uh, it'll be brief and it'll just give the calls, uh, station call letters, and at best, the city that it's broadcast from. But most of this stuff, it will be coming out of Toronto, Montreal, uh, and, uh, and Vancouver. Uh, that's it. 
those are the only three major places I know in Canada so far. But we quit right in the middle of all of this extreme coverage to come up here. And um, I'm sorry I don't have a better schedule. I couldn't have told you our schedule. We did 94 shows back to back from Tuesday uh, to, through Thursday. And then I did a half a dozen on my own that were normally scheduled shows. Um, and it's a blur. It, most of them started on the west coast of the United States. Most of them were out of California. I'm going to stand up for a moment. And um, uh, these shows um, emanated, fr frankly, all over the United States. Uh, the big broadcasters, most likely you will see, begin to see it uh, like on your newscast, like that is hit in South Africa, it's hit in Australia, and it's hit in New Zealand where the uh, television news broadcasters for those little areas are making statements. Sorry, get the feedback here. I shouldn't have messed, yeah. shouldn't have messed with this thing. Um, the major, the majors across uh, around the planet are picking this thing up, and they are putting it out on their TV news, local TV news broadcast, like the Australian Broadcast Corporation put out um, through all their affiliates uh, a little blurb that said, and uh, further in further news, I'm just ad libbing, um, uh, uh, charges of sexual abuse uh, are have been made against. Uh, Vice President nominee Dick Cheney. More to follow. That's it. And then what we've done is we've done radio shows. Um, we take it from that and, and um, with a, a strong determination and for them not to sensationalize the, the sexual aspect because it's so minor in comparison to the magnitude of mind control, um, what's happening in our societies, and of course. Um, you all know what our intent and our motive is and has been for so many years. The fact that, that they might want to go in a sensational direction or, or do it to feel their own partisan politics, whatever angle that they're taking, is something that um, we expect to encounter and yet be able to overcome and ensure that the word gets out the way that it needs to so that other people won't have to go through what I've been through and so that folks like yourselves can have the facts and the knowledge base of truth. We've gotten some extremely good advice from some professionals in the media business while we've been here. And I'm going to follow that advice to the letter. When somebody speaks in, their, in the business and I know nothing about, I listen. Kathy and I have done literally thousands, not hundreds as in the bio, but thousands of radio shows under our belt, Ca talk radio shows in the States and everywhere. I mean, uh, now it's gone into, uh, as I said the other day, all across uh, Southeast Asia, any everywhere where it's bilingual and even subtitled in, J in Japan, um, Nippon News has got it. And we got to do a show for Nippon News. Um, that may even break in Canada, um, uh, may even break in Vancouver. I, I was told that it was part of their market. Don't know. I don't know about this stuff. So I'm sorry we don't have an agent <laughs> to, to stand up here and tell you all these radio shows. Um, Kathy and I have been pretty much an army of two with some extraordinary help from volunteers and, and dear friends like Wes and, and, and uh, uh, Joanne Norbrotman and other people have, have come and helped us um, just contributing whatever they could as far as exposure time. So I don't want to dwell on that, but that's, that's a real good question that has no answer right now. Uh, we're, we're walking back into a snake pit tomorrow. Yes? Um, just to jump right in, um, if you could update us with what's happening with your daughter. Kelly. Thank you. I appreciate that. So, so many of you have asked about Kelly and, and how she's doing. And Kelly's 20 years old now, so she's of legal age. 
She's free of the custody of the state of Tennessee. It's allowed for us to expand and update our book, Transformation of America, as of the sixth edition. Um, of course, we're in our eighth printing now, so for the, the last two and, and going on three now, Kelly's information has been included in there. When Kelly became of age, the state of Tennessee prepared to turn her out onto the streets by taking away all of her personal belongings, all of the letters that she and I had been writing back and forth over the years, all of her personal effects. The they, they took away her clothes, even took away her <laughs> underclothes, her toothbrush, everything that she owned was taken away from her. And we were not notified. And the only thing that she was given was a black trench coat. And I had to retrieve her from a crack house um, run by a Jamaican who was probably one of the meanest looking people I have ever encountered at literal gunpoint. Um, uh, it's quite legal for me to be armed in the States. Kelly was in a situation when she was turned out that was as precarious and as dangerous and horrible as any uh. mother could ever imagine for their child. Mark and I were able to get to her and get her to safety immediately. Kelly's been in a safe environment where she's understood, she, where a lot of folks in the community are looking out for her. They're well aware of, of um, her situation and also the fact that Kelly is still accessible. Because she's accessible, one tone call could actually activate her into a, a violent situation that could be of the magnitude of the Columbine School Massacre. The black trench coat that she was given was a strong indicator that she was being set up for that and I, I just adamantly had a, a fit over that and had it returned immediately and let them know that we knew they were up to something with it. Kelly knows that she's still accessible, but by keeping this pro proverbial spotlight of truth on her and by so many people from all over the world genuinely caring and sending love her way in whatever form that, that they choose to send love, whether it be through prayer or whatever methodism, love is love and she's receiving it and it's made a profound difference for Kelly. Profound. It keeps her safe. It's kept her safe. She's not been activated and Kelly is acutely aware of who and what we're up against. She's aware that people do care very much about her and love is the most healing force that anybody could ever experience. In spite of her need for technological rehabilitation so that she's not activated, so that she's not um, continuously going into the espionage level, respiratory failure that continues to plague her, <coughs> Kelly is wise, she's happy, she has a lot of hope that people will continue to wake up en masse and she has fallen in love right at the moment. <laughs> She's fallen in love with uh, a, a fine fellow that's, um, yeah, he's a nice guy. That, that really cares for her and her situation um, right now. So she's, she's doing remarkably well. The fact that she can even have a relationship is phenomenal to me. I'm just deeply, deeply proud of her. Very happy for her um, during this interim period until we get her the, the help that she needs. Um, Kelly maintains a lot of hope based on the same concept that I've adhered to for so long and that's the, the whole fact that universal justice is so strong and it, it's definitely tipped to the good side. After all that she's endured in her life, what does her future hold? It's going to be real good to balance out what she's been through and it's going to be real exciting for her. So she's looking forward to what can happen once she's uh, totally freed from their grasp. Yes, sir. It's just excellent to hear your story. And now, from a practical perspective, w it's very easy to feel overwhelmed uh, upon hearing uh, your talk and reading the book and, and, and getting to know the story that's behind you. On a practical level, what can people do to have an impact on the community to make the public more aware, make their politicians perhaps more aware, or make people who are in a position to create some change more aware of what's going on? Could right. you answer that? We don't need revolution, we need evolution. Uh, we need to get the leaders 
literally to follow us. Um, I always adhere to the principle of Gandhi, noncompliance in mass, but it has to be in mass. You've got to have a mindset that literally spreads throughout the masses. Um, the West Mans uh, and, and all the other fine speakers, and good gosh, the lineup you had here uh, that I didn't get to hear, there were three or four of them that um, I would have <laughs> gladly traveled across country and, and given up <laughs> our um, uh, electrical power payment, <laughs> delayed a month just, just to have heard them, and I didn't get to. Uh, but um, bottom line is, those people are making a huge impact. What is happening in Canada? Unfortunately, I've been out of the loop. I've been in Australia. And I know a whole lot about Australia. And I know a whole, way more than I wished uh, that's happening in the United States and within the United Nations. There is an internal <laughs> revolution going on um, within these, these organizations that comprise what we call the global elite. Um, uh, there's not enough bad guys to go around, good news. Uh, there's the grassroots uh, efforts of so many uh, people like Wes has had here speaking that have, have been here and uh, uh, told you all to do this or suggested you look into that and, and suggested that you, you know, uh, go in this direction, uh, talk about this. Uh, Wes does the best job he can, and I can tell you that I've worked with, Kathy and I have worked on circuits a long, long time um, where we hear a lot of speakers that is pure nonsense, pure rubbish, get you locked up if you did what they suggested, or <laughs> worse, hurt your health. But Wes has been very discerning, and uh, he's been one of the ones that has really managed to keep good speakers who are giving you good direction. To answer that question um, more directly is to not really, um, as I said the other day, don't don't take er anything at face value. <coughs> Research it, and whichever area, whether it be taxation, whether it be uh, human rights issues, so on and so on and so on, whatever, stick with one thing. And start with your, the people that respect your opinion, and that would be your loved ones. And then they will do the same with their loved ones. And it starts going in that direction. Um, when you talk about love healing the world, that's not really a corny statement. Uh, love heal Kathy. Um, there's a lot of people uh, that in Kathy's position um, that that could go to uh, the greatest of all of mental health practitioners and it would take years to accomplish what she accomplished in about nine months. But they can't love their patients and if they do they're going to lose their license and go to jail. Uh, I know of one great psychiatrist on the East Coast that did fall in love with his patient and he wrote a book. <laughs> he said never, never, never ever, ever, ever have a relationship with your patient. If you do, marry him and never divorce him. And he never has. He married her. And um, they've been married for 29 years, I think. Uh, and he's one of the greatest psychiatrists, uh, I think, probably in the United States. I look back on the McMartin uh, preschool case where the, the children were abused in the daycare center and, and every, all the children had the same story to tell and yet no justice ever came about in that case. No one believed the children. No one listened to the children. This was back a few years. And the devastation that that had on the kids and on the society, it set, it set a precedent that was extremely negative and yet opened some folks' eyes up to the fact that we need to start believing the children. We need to listen to what they're saying. As horrific as it is for us to believe, as much as we don't want to believe it, we need to listen to what they're saying and respond to them with love. Again, that would make all the difference in the world. A little understanding, a little bit of love goes a long way. There's an organization in New Zealand that is working with children on a global scale in the education program, the ones who've already been exposed to global ed, the ones who have l 
already had their ability to critically analyze lessened so far that they have a hard time being creative and, and utilizing what they're learning in school. They, taking away their ability to critically analyze and creatively use what they learn is actually becoming a detriment. It's not working. And the children need help to be able to have that back and to regain that back. She goes into the school system. She goes into and teaches um, the, the organizations that are not only homeschooling, but are also caught up in the system already to begin to teach the children creativity, to learn to expand their thinking, to think beyond what they've already learned and to, to learn to question again. In so many ways, um, most people in society, most adults in society need the same thing. The ones that have been conditioned by television, by misinformation through the medias, through uh, control of information through the medias, or the kind of suppression of pertinent facts. We need to begin to reevaluate our knowledge base and learn to think further, to consider other perspectives, to be able to ask questions and Look into the history that the children are learning in the schools. If you've got children in school, become involved in their education. See what it is they're learning, how they're learning it. Continue to teach them creative thinking at home. Those are enormous helps in, in areas like that. Have, teach mental health how to understand and open their eyes. Um, strongly recommend that people take our book because I know of the facts documented, the documented in it and the, the credibility that the book is standing on at, at this point and, and has for some time now. And it can make an enormous difference. Even though people don't want to believe that horrible of a truth, it ultimately will set them free. It ultimately helps people to think further and helps them to look at something that they otherwise wouldn't even have considered happening, the kind of horrific abuse that continues to proliferate, that's eroding at the very moral fiber of our societies, and that's ultimately hurting all of us. And it's essential that people have a knowledge base of truth again. So um, it's, it's imperative that we continue to raise awareness and do it with a knowledge base of truth. And of course, any time that you do pass out a book or spread the word in any way whatsoever, encourage well, others to time. look we'll into probably. it and research it further because that is part of the process of learning to think further is being able to do the research and ask the questions. We've got a long line there, Joe. Yes. I spoke a little bit about the, um, the uh, harmonics technology that uh, Kelly is suffering under. Can you, or sure. do, do you want to speak a bit more sure. about that? Just to um, harmonics uh, is going to be really um, one of the healing arts of the future. Uh, it's been around, uh, I can talk about it now. <laughs> I talk about a whole lot of stuff that I've never been able to talk about. But what I was seeing in application with the use of harmonics, I could use, I could benefit from for my back right now. As a matter of fact, I'd been contacted right before I left by someone uh, disenfranchised from the intelligence community, at least his contacts were, that were going to provide me some uh, physical relief. And um, uh, I got my medical records to them and everything else, and they're going to do it. But the harmonics that you're speaking of, uh, as far as being used uh, in a negative fashion, uh, can also be used in a positive fashion. Uh, anything like medicine can be used for healing. What actually happens is each cell vibrates at a, at a different rate, a ratio, and each uh, some cell clusters, like the brain stem, for instance, um, where our memory really begins and, and where it's it, it, the compartmentalization, uh, whether it goes into an emotional com compartment or whether it goes into a logic compartment. Um, and then branches off from there. Everything that you've seen, every license plate that you've passed, I mean, you're talking about junk in your head. Um, uh, your brain is like a computer uh, that you've never cleaned out, and you've opened every email for 5,000 years. <laughs> I mean, it's just full. 
of junk. And, and your brain, incredibly, is able to sort this out. Um, what harmonics in programming does is it blocks the brain's ability by scarring the brain stem. It looks very much like, uh, when there's a dye study done, it looks like the person is suffering from multiple sclerosis, uh, MS. Uh, Kelly's brain stem is so scarred, she looks like it's, she's suffering from MS. And that is harmonics, uh, results of harmonic abuse and, and application in programming. Um, the stuff that Kelly has described to her doctors that is a matter of record is stuff that I saw in the 60s and 70s being used on astronauts. Um, and you know, I considered it quite benevolent. As a matter of fact, I even subjected myself to it one time. And I, uh, when Kathy, I asked her, I, I asked her um, she commented on harmonic hell in her writings. Well, I never, ever, ever, I mean, there's no such thing as deprogramming. You, you, the person deprograms themselves once they are in a safe environment and once they're structured in a certain manner. We won't get into that unless you want to ask the question. But nevertheless, um, I'd ask Kathy one question. I said, what's harmonic hell? And what she described was exactly what I heard, only for a fraction of a second. I can't imagine being subjected to it over a long period of time. What I heard sounded like two giant, rusty ships scrubbing each other. It was worse than any screech on a blackboard you can imagine. And I heard this, and I thought, good Lord, you know, and it was, it was off my head. A half second. Um, in that half, or we'll say logically, two or three seconds. In that two or three seconds that I heard that, um, I said, my God, that's got to do some damage to you. To your, to your ears, and the scientist looked at me and he said, hmm, your brain. <laughs> so, I said, well, thanks. <laughs> Mark, you're talking... I said, I, have I ever suffered any damage? He said, no. Are, are you, you're talking about physical damage to the brain then? Yes. Is that right? That's okay. correct. Now, but that... it is reversible. It is reversible. Yes. Okay. The, synapse, uh, the synapse will fire back in the opposite direction and ignore the scarring. In other words, it'll, 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 the brain has an incredible ability to to um, you can reroute itself. Yeah. Thank you. Um, the circuitry of the brain is is much more complex than that of any uh, Cray computer or supercomputer that the government has. Uh, it, well, <laughs> so I believed until recently in Australia and, and talking to those people down there who had worked for the government, our government and their government, they were much more vocal. And uh, they were providing me with some hard proofs that um, our government won't allow. Um, I mean, <laughs> I was overwhelmed with the technologies that the, the global elite have at their disposal. And it is terrifying. I thought HARP, you know, uh, was um, something that I thought, well, you know, they're going to eventually learn that superheating the ionosphere is going to get us all. And they're going to change the weather patterns. And these idiots don't want to destroy everything, surely goodness. Well, <laughs> uh, I was right and I was wrong, usual. Uh, they, got, they got other equipment that is much more sophisticated uh, for global weather and mind control that is way beyond uh, the Tesla stuff involved in the high altitude oral research project known as HARP. I'm just wondering uh, if, in Kelly's case, there may be uh, practitioners that are familiar with the technology that could help her. Or yes. Is it just a matter of the technology out? is. I mean, I can make it up at Radio Shack. It's the computer program that runs it uh, that is impossible. I mean, uh, without your uh, without a good program, I said, "Why, Bill Gates is uh, worth 150 billion dollars." He's worth the gross national product of most countries in the Pacific Rim. Uh, and that's no joke. That's a fact. Um, uh, he did it because he knows how to make this computer work. Uh, the equipment to do it re requires really a harmonic generator and a delivery system. And uh, using electrodes, it's really simple to make. I mean, but <laughs> when I hear people that are experimenting with it, it's, it's more or less like throwing a pin in the dark and expecting to hit a, a million-dollar bill or something. I mean, 
it doesn't make any sense. It requires a highly sophisticated program. That program is all we need to get access to. Um, that program is emerging through natural attrition in many medical research projects that are not going to be suppressed. So poor Kelly has had to sit around and wait on the antidote that has been around, I know, since 1969, for sure. Absolute, for sure, positive. Because the antidote, uh, those astronauts are not robots. Uh, we had one in our, in our country, John Glenn, most famous of all, that uh, was in Congress. And I didn't see any robotic behavior with him. Um, I'm certainly not a John Glenn advocate by any stretch of imagination, but uh, I got you. Um, at any rate, the, the, the point remains the same. They got an antidote for whatever they can put out. And, and in Kelly's case, they had the antidote, and that's why I have stuck in there for 13 years and taken all this grief from everybody because I knew they had the antidote. And I told them, give me my money back in the beginning, I fix Kelly, and fix Kathy. Don't put me through this. Okay, then after I had to fix Kathy, they provided the antidote for Kathy now, I will admit. They gave it to me by telephone. Um, that's in the book. Not in detail, but it's in the book. Uh, it will be in detail in motion picture, uh, which will be, we hope and pray, available for anybody to see in more than one language soon. Um, we're looking towards a number of documentaries. And uh, Discovery Channel and a few other of the major channels around have put out a tremendous amount of mind control stuff. We had a, a, a candidate recently who was a prisoner of war in, in Vietnam, uh, John McCain, whose father was an admiral. His father before him was, um, I, I believe, an admiral as well. John Glenn was a prisoner of war, and when they found out who he was, he went through a brainwashing process, as they call it. And uh, he was literally tortured out of his mind. And he got on national television now. I'm so proud of this guy. He got on national television and explained exactly how brainwashing works, exactly how mind control works, and exactly how his recovery worked, and exactly how the guys inside those prisons in Hanoi were able to cope with it. And I'm going, oh, my God, here's a candidate for the United States. And then the guy rolls over and, and supports Bush. And everybody goes, what in the world's wrong with him? And they boo him out of the audiences and everything else. Uh, it's, it was, it's really pitiful. Uh, but I don't know John McCain. I don't know how re recovered he is. All I know is that that sparkle in, in his eye and his voice was gone when he stood up there and delivered supposedly the greatest speech, most patriotic speech in support of W. Bush, <laughs> as they call him, W. Uh, it's a heartbreaker. Uh, whether or not we have any impact on the Cheney Bush ticket, uh, I don't know. Well, I mean, wh what's to replace them with? I mean, good grief. Uh, there's plenty of great choices that have done their best to, to, to become uh, vocal candidates and, and get out there. I, there was a little billionaire from Texas. I'm not supporting him any, by any stretch of imagination, but this guy's a billionaire. And <laughs> even he couldn't uh, get airtime by the media, but he did win a major lawsuit against the media, and they, and they have to give every candidate uh, equal, or sell them equal time if, if, in fact, they can afford to pay for it. My favorite campaign button is humanity for president. When the people lead, the leaders follow. It's inexcusable to allow that handful of criminals to control our technology when, and, and our information when so many people are in need of the release of it. And it's time good people realize that they are the majority. As we make a positive difference within our own walk of life, within our own communities, as is happening globally and beginning to happen globally, then it's, um, it's just a matter of time until the government realizes nobody is listening to them anymore. At the, at the conclusion of this uh, question and answer period, uh, I'm going to tell you all, I'm going to give you a scoop. So stick around. Next question. <laughs>
It's gonna make you happy, I promise. I can give you, I'll give you a peep through the, through the window in time. Yes. Um, how, how can I recognize a mind-controlled, ultra mind-controlled victim? Well, or, uh, or and, and are there levels of, um, of mind control? Oh yes. How to recognize one uh, is extremely difficult, and it's virtually impossible now. Um, uh, but, uh, if they're subjected to modern technology, uh, you'd have to do some testing and get one-on-one -on -one with them to find out. Uh, in the old days, when these people had been uh, just conditioned uh, mind control, I'm talking about mind control now, uh, hardcore robotic mind control where somebody is suffering from a dissociative identity disorder, not dissociative disorder now. Big difference. One is a sniffles and one is AIDS. <laughs> in comparison, um, was, was difficult. The first time I saw Kathy, I thought she was a bimbo, just a, a village idiot type, for one thing, for hanging around with the likes of Alex Houston. Um, uh, I mean, ugh. <laughs> I don't think about it, not after dinner. That was a great dinner. But to, to, to give you some... Um, tips on how it used to be, you used to be able to see the perpetual smile, the waxing face, the, the youth uh, that never seems to go away. Um, they have no idea how old they are. They'll tell you different, two different ages. They rarely blink. They, their blink response is terrible. They've got uh, a great big pupillary dilation, uh, all suffering from post-traumatic stress disorder as a result of the ritualistic traumas. I mean, I'm saying ritualistic and not necessarily alcohol ritualistic, but uh, <laughs> it usually was. Um, and the levels of mind control go from what our children are exposed to with having their history books altered and their learning uh, tools uh, that are being used against them to increase their ability to, uh, uh, to learn, but... Uh, reduces their ability to uh, uh, what about critically, analyze. critically analyze. So from that, moving up the scale, you go to uh, media hype, and you go to media spin, as they call it, where our information, I mean, it's in there somewhere. Uh, I can read the New York Times now um, and, and actually read the real news. It's in there. But you've got to know something about neurolinguistics, okay? I, I urge each of you in this room Absolutely. to please, please. Uh, Canada and the United States are the last countries on, the, on this planet that I know of. What? Yeah, it was plum mean. Uh, <laughs> to to uh, really get into the neurolinguistics. Neurolinguistics simply is the language of the unconscious, language of the subconscious. It was how I was able to make a fabulous amount of money drawing ads, print ads up, that you did not have to read. All you had to do was just flip the page. I got you. Um, what you need to do, because the mind's eye is a lot quicker than the, uh, on a subconscious level than your conscious is, what you need to do is look into neurolinguistics. That will give you protection from, uh, from manipulation, okay, from advertising, from uh, certain uh, te whoa, so for certain television uh, broadcasts, uh, it'll give you discernment. Uh, with uh, he's harmless. <laughs> um, it'll, it'll help you in that regard. Now moving up the scale from there, you get into what is known as people who have been uh, tra highly traumatized, not necessarily ritualistically or, or systematically before age five, before their brain is formed. Uh, that usually creates dissociative identity disorder, so that's the top of the scale. Uh, well, what I'm talking about are like four out of five girls in North America are, are sexually abused before um, they are of legal age. This is a terrifying statistic. I, you know, I would have thought it was one in a hundred. Uh, I was really naive. I didn't know. And three out of five boys 
uh, as of 1999, uh, according to statistics, three out of five boys before, the, before, before puberty are abused, sexually abused by an adult. If they suffer from a dissociative identity disorder, they're highly suggestible and can be easily led by, by anyone that, um, that comes along and they can sway in the wind real easily. They, they don't have the conviction. They don't have the ability to stay rooted in what they believe in. Um, they may focus on it for a moment and something passes in front of them and they'll just go with that. And they're, they're so easily led and highly suggestible that, you know, do we call that mind control? Right now, France is passing laws against mind control mm -hmm. and having to define it because of the vast sliding scale of it is extremely difficult. Yeah, France is the first country in the world to, le uh, to form legislation pass laws against mind control. Okay, I'm so happy I'm about to burst. Except for one little bitty problem. <laughs> they're being attacked by the churches, number one. They're being attacked by the ad agencies, number two. Those are the two biggest lobbies against it. I can understand why, because um, what you're trying to do is, is say, okay, you can't communicate anymore. If a person loses their free thought and their free will and and their sole expression, that is an absolute extreme that has got to be recognized and stopped. A person who's been sexually abused and suffered from a, suffers from a dissociative identity disorder has already gone over the line. It's too, it's incomprehensible abuse. And once it's incomprehensible and there's no place for it, it's like, it's as though the, the, the spirit is removed from it. The conscious mind is removed from it. And what happens after that, not that it's irrelevant, but what happens after that is after the fact, it's already over the line, the damage is already done, the dissociation and the compartmentalization is already in place. That person is always going to be easily led. They're going to be much more apt to pick up a magazine with, the, um, with, with sub subliminal uh, messages in it and respond to it and go out and buy everything that, that they, every ad that they see on TV, they'll go buy the products rather than actually make a decision about it. Um, so we, we need to recognize that they have that problem. In addition to that then, as they learn about mind control, they're apt to adapt that to themselves. When Mark and I spoke out with mental health professionals for the first five years, we encouraged them not to have group therapy. Oh my God. If that, by having group therapy with all of these affected people telling each other, they all pick up on each other's abuse and, and adapt it as their own. They need to write it out and do it on their own in order to actually recover because it's truth that makes them free. And you can't, and, and the therapists were, were doing it from a, um, from a position of stating that uh, it was, um, um, it was getting into their persona, it was, it was fragmenting their persona, so what their idea was is to keep it in the emotional because they seem to be all coming from the emotional side. Well, what they were doing literally was, was what I call collapsing the anchors even deeper to where the person could never be easily recovered. And the people that were going through therapy in the early days, I mean, there's a lot of doctors who are winding up with scissors in their shoulders and pencils in their hand, and, and they're getting lawsuits slapped on them, and doctors are being accused of rape and everything else. I'm not saying it didn't happen, but I'm saying that the vast majority of them didn't happen. Um, these patients were extraordinarily delusional uh, because the doctors were making the great pitfall of saying, uh, this is a psychologist's favorite thing to say is, how does that make you feel? Oh my God. Wrong, wrong, wrong. A best therapist <laughs> teaches a person how to think, not, not what to think, right. and by asking leading questions like, oh, is that daddy did that to you? Is the pro oh, yes, that was daddy, because they're highly suggestible. So we've got daddy to realize their suggestibility level is, um, is in place. And instead, the question should be, who was that that did that to you? So there's a way of, of even formulating questions that are, are less leading. I never even asked any questions, uh, and I don't even believe in that aspect of it. But when I, names would be sure. put on a piece of paper, I would say, who is this person? Even though, even though if I knew the name, I mean, it could have been Ronald Reagan. But I said, who is this? 
you know, because it, uh, it may be a screen memory or it may be something that is not accurate or something that was implanted. And they'd say, well, it's so-and-so. You know, I'd say, oh. As much as we but encourage... I, 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 that, that, I'm sorry. I, that was the only, only level of deprogramming that I actually asked any questions about. And it was just a confirmation. Frankly, when I was exposed to what Kathy told, I went into what was known as post-traumatic stress disorder, shock, okay? It was horrible I, because I had never seen or even imagined that this could happen in my country or in this country. Um, I knew about what you and Cameron did, but what you and Cameron did in Montreal, my God, was absolutely horrible. But, uh, and I knew the details that had been brought out in Congress. But, oh, my God, it was nothing in comparison to the stuff that was coming out of her. Well, I thought, well, this is Fantasy City. And so I turned it over to some people in the intelligence community and within the military and within the Park Service. And uh, the Park Service controlled all the, wa the monuments in, in Washington. I turned it over to all these different people. Um, and they kept coming back to me, especially U.S. Customs. And I'm really giving up a lot of stuff right now. Uh, U.S. Customs came back to me with hardcore validation. I'm going, good Lord, uh, we're just we're it's over, it's ruined. We're all we're all doomed, you know. And that was my attitude. And so I realized I knew enough about PTSD, I knew enough about shock to know what I needed to do to take care of Mark, because I mean I'm supposed to be taking care of her. And I'm going into PTSD over what I'm hearing. My God, um, it was it was absolutely horrific. Uh, the the process. I got over it really quick. Dealt with it, and and on a professional level because I knew what to do for myself. Uh, next question. Mosquitoes are awful. Sorry. I'm enjoying everything you're saying. Um, it seems to me that all of society is under some form of mind control, sure. it's just media or different levels, right? And, and I really am seeing your story as a large teaching for all of us to break free. But one thing concerns me is that when the, your story finally gets out to more and more people, aren't we going to notice that there are more people coming out that are under this type of control as sex slaves or whatever, just no, they being won't. used? Uh, here's, here's the catch in the book. Uh, <laughs> you know how a map maker puts puts um, fake a fake town on in his map to protect the integrity of his of his work. So if somebody copies his map, he can sue them and recover these losses because of all that expense that he went to to produce that map. There are fingerprints in that book. If someone says they escaped from mind control, it's it's total baloney. They escaped from abuse. Okay, it's impossible to escape from mind control because you have to think. You don't think under mind controls. There's no, there's no sliding scale of that of robotic mind controls. No such thing. It's so you're saying there's a definite threshold where. Yeah, yeah, and that's what Kathy said earlier. Once you pass over that threshold, you don't escape. Period. End of statement. And by law, you cannot take someone out of of that. Uh, um, in that condition, I mean, you'd kidnap them is right. what you'd literally have to do. And that was my question is, uh, you know, once we start noticing and we, come, we become more aware that there are people that are being controlled around us and maybe someone we care about, what kind of steps do we take? Wow. Um, that is it seems to me like we're going to need some sort of large program or... We, you've got one in <laughs> Edmonton, Alberta. Besides, I mean, we've got a lot of nice, good healers and a lot of different techniques, but how do you help someone that doesn't want to help themselves? Well, That's unfortunately, they don't want to help themselves, and unfortunately, victims of, um, uh, let's just say, incest. Let's say they, they suffer from dissociative identity disorder as a result of incest, and um, they are highly functional. Some people are highly functional, go through their whole life, and never have any problem, believe it or not. And others start breaking down at different points. There are five points in a person's lifespan where they start, they start breaking down and looking very much like the Mel Gibson character in, in Conspiracy Theory. 
Um, there's also another movie out that I was introduced to called Time Bomb. It's made in 1993. It's probably the most accurate I have ever seen on mind control that's been, you know, uh, you know uh, for the theater uh, that I would highly recommend, Time Bomb. Um, it was, uh, but I do know it was made in 1993. I never heard of it um, until I was, uh, it was handed to me by a lawyer. He said, watch this. It's I, a little over-dramatized, but it's little hard to depict what's happening in someone's brain. But it's absolutely on target. Um, as yeah. far as, as the, uh, there, there is a huge, 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 huge problem. You cannot violate someone's civil rights by incarcerating them, basically. Uh, in other words, to protect them from themselves, because they have these personas that will report back. Basically, at this point, we've got to get some laws changed. In, in this country, in our country, uh, the first thing we got to do is get this National Security Act abolished in my country because every country like Canada, uh, who's fallen prey to people like Ewan Cameron, who's the founder of the, uh, the American Psychiatric Association, who did all those diabolical things in, in the uh, Institute in Montreal during the 50s and 60s. Uh, I mean, the CIA skated on this thing. Um, there was tens of millions of dollars spent in, in uh, lawsuit or legal fees and in, in getting this case before the public. And the CIA never had to admit a darn thing. They never had to pay anything off but 50 grand or something. It was, it was ridiculous. <coughs> Pardon me. But the bottom line was that they, they did it legally. Legally. Because you guys got blindsided because the United States and every ally of the United States, and there's only, what, seven countries, I think, left in the world that aren't allies, uh, have signed this treaty. <laughs> the bottom line is, our National Security Act applies to Canadians. That's horrible. But guess what? If you watch The Sleep Room, which was a fine production, uh, and for the CBC, it did it two parts, I don't know, three years ago. Um, how many people in this room heard of The Sleep Room? Oh my wow. God, that's scary. Whoa. Go to your library and get it. It's, it's a video. You can order it from the Discovery Channel. Very important. Or you right. can just, frankly, go to any library or any video store. It's called The Sleep Room, for Pete's sakes. It is, a, it is dramatized, 100% accurate, detailed um, about what it takes to, to, to go up against the big guys on, on uh, my control issues and what happened to the Canadians and why that Canadian minister's wife um, who went in for simple depression and came out of vegetable uh, and he's the one that, that really launched the whole thing because he had political clout. Um, but the bottom line was the CIA skated on it. And um, then they slapped the National Security Act Kathy and I are, are one of only two people, individuals, that have been fortunate enough to have them do it in open court. Uh, in the sleep room, they did it in chambers, well, like they've always done it on all the cases. But <laughs> we're just absolutely the luckiest people on, the, on this planet that we had a, <laughs> a prima donna judge that <laughs> invoked the National Security Act in open court. Oh, my God. It's, the, uh, it's what kept us alive. Just one, one little bit different perspective on the answer of helping people that, that don't necessarily want to look at what happened to them. There are um, people who have grown up from a sexually abused in, environment, begin to have repressed memories surfacing, usually around the age of 30 or shortly thereafter, and they don't really want to deal with the issues. The person continues to maintain their life in a manner that leaves the, where they're highly suggestible, little disjointed, enormous mood swings, severe depression, and going to a psychiatrist or a psychologist that they may have done in the past, may not have helped properly or whatever. Bottom line is those people could take one simple word of advice that could help them enormously. If they're afraid to look at their memories, it's because they verbalized them in the past. Don't and ever verbal let them verbalize them. Verbalizing them keeps it in the emotional. 
if the compartmentalization of memory occurs because of a trauma too horrible to comprehend, that trauma must be made comprehensible. The only way to do that is to write out memory. By writing out memory, the very act of moving a pen takes the logic portion of the brain. So the memory of the event that's so horribly emotionally incomprehensible is transferred over to the logical, written out in detail on paper in a way where it's shifted, it's shifted over and it's gone into a completely logical way. Logic makes the incomprehensible comprehensible. Then after the e event is remembered in full detail, then dealing with the emotional issues about what happened is usually um, less, less overwhelming and less, less relevant and rarely even requires a psychologist or a psychologist. If there's a loving person in the, the family or, or any of you are concerned of, of a loved one in that manner, love is all the support that they would need to be able to um, get through the reality of dealing with the issue. But writing out the memory is the key. Even if they don't want to look at it, that makes it easy to deal with. Next one. Thank you. Boy, these are great questions, you all. Big bugs, but great questions. There's <laughs> I haven't, uh, I haven't read the book yet, but oh. I was um, wondering that uh, Kathy yesterday was saying something about uh, the abuse happening at a very young age and then uh, the father um, being kind of an ally with the government or something and selling uh, you, you off or something, if I remember correctly. What about your brothers and sisters? Same, the same thing, uh, varying levels of, of government use that they endured. Um, they, some of them have children of their own now, and they're waiting for, um, the, for awareness to continue to raise sufficiently to where it can make a positive difference for them. We've been unable to help them because of the, the high level uh, abuse that they went through, but nevertheless, they are still locked in and in need of desperate help. Thank you. Thank you. Are you familiar with the work of Dr. Persinger out of uh, Laurentian University, Sudbury? I'm not. I'm not either. The sleep, uh, the sleep rooms that they have up there, are they, doing con uh, they do uh, work with uh, humans to try and erase cognitive skills. To, uh, but they basically are I'm familiar with the facility that you're talking about. Uh, Would you repeat his name, please? Persinger. Persinger. P E R S I N G E R. I'm sorry. No, you don't? Um, the name is, well, the facility is very familiar, so um, I, I do relate to that as being quite feasible, uh, but I'm sorry I have not read the work. Uh, okay. um, but you could share it. Well, I know I really don't want to get into it, Mark, but okay. I thought maybe I would have, uh, uh, you might have had some experience with this. I man. probably have it. We, I, you know, you know how the internet is like trying to drink out of a fire hose yeah. <laughs> information? <laughs> okay, it's a billion times worse with me. Um, we've had generals and colonels and intelligence officers and lawyers that work in the intelligence community just keep piling and they keep dying and they keep leaving the country and they keep leaving in, our, in their wills all this tons and tons and tons of information. Well, first of all, I got to scan it and make sure it's not, it has done any having classified stuff in it because I want to set up because I've had too much classified stuff come my way. I just truck it right on down to, to the Birmingham, Alabama FBI and say, okay, it's all yours. It's classified. I don't want it. You get my, I, you know, I don't even touch anything except with rubber gloves on. I'm not paranoid. It's just I don't want my prints on that stuff. So, um, and it's not a necessarily a setup. Some of these, uh, one MK Ultra lawyer uh, left me a whole lot of stuff. Uh, General Russell Boyne left me all of his Pentagon stuff, and that was one of the scariest things that I ever, in my whole career of this whistleblowing thing. It scared me half to death. And it turned out to be totally benign. Uh, but these guys look like something out of X-Files that delivered it. Oh. But nevertheless, uh, that's another story on itself. But um, I has have the book even over had there. a chance to look Immaculate at it. Discussion. That book is old. And it's called The Bush Crime Family. Uh, Immaculate Deception. Uh, Immaculate Deception. Subtitle, The Bush Crime Family. Um, and Russell Boyne, 
was incarcerated, and he was finally released on the agreement that he'd go to South America and never come back. Well, he did. And why in the world he chose me to give me all his papers, I don't know, other than the fact that I was a vocal ex spook that was willing to, I guess, go through them. Bless his heart, I hadn't even had a chance to review them. I just went through them with rubber gloves on to make sure that there wasn't any classified stuff in there, and there wasn't, thank God. Um, but uh, there was some, there was some actual valuable stuff in there, historic, of historical value, uh, metals and and um, uh, newspapers from uh, Hawaii in World War II, uh, I mean, from Hawaii, from the presses. I mean, my God, uh, this stuff has value, and, and there's been times that Kathy and I would have loved to have sold some of this stuff just in the last couple of years and didn't do it. But um, I, one of these days, I'm, before I get too old, I'd like to go through this mountain of material that I have that is totally accurate. Uh, but I have condensed it into a library of about uh, three, four thousand videos, and probably uh, half a million documents. Um, yeah, I know, it's enormous. And then the rest of it is in storage, uh, all over the place. And uh, I've got, <laughs> God, I could fill this easy, fill this tent to the ceiling with what I've got um, already. And Thank goodness I've got a place to put it all. Uh, but uh, I hope I answered your question. Uh, there's too much out there, okay? <laughs> Sorry. First in your course, is that he, he is actually being supplied money by uh, the Navy, the United States Navy, to do his operation out of uh, Sudbury, Ontario. So yep. I thought that was rather intriguing that it does cross the border. Um, I know about that facility, buddy. Okay. Uh, anyways, let's go on to the next question. Uh, Mark, can you just give us a little insight into uh, people who claim to have implants, uh, alien or otherwise, and just make some comments? Thanks. Okay, I'm gonna make I'm gonna make some comments. Okay, and and this is you've got to understand my knowledge. First of all, is almost antique. You got that? Because technology is doubling, like er at the rate used to d double every 150 years. Well, it used to double every 1,000 years, and then it went to 150 years, then it went to 50 years, then it went to 25 years. And in the last um, decade, it is, I'm, I'm understand the scientific community has made publications, NASA has too, that, that technology <coughs> is doubling at the rate uh, every uh, seven to eight weeks. And now I'm, I'm told it's even increasing faster than that. So <laughs> what I want to answer your question is, uh, um, kind of important. I worked for a company that manufactured implants. I worked for the company that developed um, the first telemetry that is now used very, very, very good for heart patients and all kinds of stuff. But it was initially used in the, in the space program and the scientists that, that developed it were handed the technology, that's how they're paid off. And then they developed a little company, and then they brought in me uh, as the medical uh, marketing director uh, of laser systems and electronics. We we worked uh, in research on on some implants that that would actually transmit back certain types of, of medical information. Uh, uh, in addition to, they had the capacity, okay, of developing those implants at uh, Brigham Young University, you know, this is free FOIA stuff, I'm not giving away anything, folks. Um, you just never heard of it uh, before, but it's all trackable, go to the library, read it up. Anyway, Brigham Young University was, uh, had a military grant where they were working where they could change behavior with implants. Well, the only little problem with these things, uh, it was the procedure was called a transphenoidal hypothectomy, where they went in and put them in the up here in the science cavities. And they could actually affect behavior um, in some bizarre ways. And it was supposed to be used on incorrigible uh, prisoners or people with brain damage rather than use drugs. Okay, uh, cut to the chase. They lost so many patients um, in these so-called benevolent, benign experiments that, that uh, implants were completely thrown out. 
Well, the CIA, <laughs> during the 80s and 90s, put out tons of stuff about implants so that, so that the people would believe that there were all these people running around with these chips in them. And that was how they were, that was the basis for mind control. That was, a, hey, look over here, <laughs> you know, type of routine. Same old, same old, same old. Okay. The bottom line was, yes, they've got implants. And yes, they are extraordinarily sophisticated. And yes, they're used, I know for a fact, for the GPS tracking system. And as a matter of fact, you can go to the James Book of Modern Weaponry and look it up. It's right there before your very eyes. Um, and they give up all, all the information about this stuff. Um, if any of you all have worked in any defense projects, you can go to the Defense Department of, of this country. Canada's got one of the biggest uh, magazines in the world on military hardware. They've even written about this stuff. Now, you can't get it unless you have worked for the, are working for the Defense Department and given an invitation to these, these things. I last gave of all, I was, uh, it was some years ago, uh, invited to. They don't like it anymore. Um, and I don't really want to go anymore. It's going to be creeps now. Uh, the stuff that I saw, and the last one I got invited to was in 1993. When it, it, it scared me so bad, the stuff that they had showing then, and I understand now that stuff's antique. It scared me so bad. I walked out there. It, it was in Miami, and I was just walking out vibrating. It scared me so bad. Um, and that stuff evolved into some stuff that we used in uh, Operation Desert Storm that made it look ridiculous. Um, implants for mind control purposes, that is pure bunk. They can do it remotely. Um, they can do it uh, once they've got your brainwave patterns tracked. Uh, I, I can scare you half to death with some of the stuff that they can do technologically now, and they don't have to even get close to you. Um, the stuff is terrifying. And people say, well, why in the nails you? Um, I can give you a zillion reasons why, but I'm going to do it through celluloid and videotape. And it's all going to be out very, very soon. Um, I'm not going to, I'm not going <laughs> to spill the beans right here, right now. But we are going to, we are going to do uh, a massive campaign. We are going to tell all we know. Uh, because we can now. Uh, but, uh, I hope that answers your question. Yes. Kathy, you mentioned something earlier about uh, the writing down uh, of the uh, victim. Does this mean when the victim is in a position to want to uh, get better that they should start writing down uh, what happened to them? Do they need professional help to be doing this or can they do this on their own uh, with the help of a good friend? Uh, that's that's my first question, and uh, there's sort of an adjunct to that, if you could answer that. Uh, Vern, can I in inject something? Sure. It depends on, uh, these people need to be clinically evaluated to see how bad off they are, okay? There's such a thing as polyfragmentation. I'm, all, I'm not trying to bury you in big words. But there is a dissociative disorder, and it has a huge sliding scale, and then it goes to dissociative identity disorder, which unfortunately has a sliding scale um, and that goes all the way to the very worst, which I think is her, Kathy's daughter, uh, where she's got, you know, scar on her brain stem. Uh, Kathy's got scar on her brain stem, but it's not anything remotely like that. Everybody in this audience has had some kind of trauma that's caused scar on their brain stem. Everybody here, um, including losing a dollar to you, which I got in my pocket. <laughs> um, <laughs> That's the best dollar I ever lost. <laughs> um, at any rate, um, the bottom line is uh, I, I can't tell you, and Kathy can't tell you categorically, that writing down memories is going to lock her in to that persona and she's not going to be triggered. The only way you're going to lock her into a persona is to get her away from her current environment and persuade her to do this and uh, make sure you don't have a telephone or, and she doesn't have any way to communicate while she's writing out her memories. And it, then she goes into a process called fusion. And during this fusion process, it takes about a year of intense work, at, which is not even practical. You can't do it unless you're armed with a whole lot of knowledge. I was armed with a whole lot of knowledge, and I got my hand held literally every other day uh, with these calls that I was making. 
<coughs> asking questions. But, you know, how to know what question to ask is the biggest problem uh, for most people, and at least I knew what questions to ask. If a person knows that they need help, then they're most likely in a position to be able to recover if they can, if they can even think of it. Then mind control most likely is not um, an active part of, of their situation. And yes, writing out memory is something that they can do all on their own and learn the ways of asking themselves questions like, that so often if it's a compartmentalized memory, they'll just empty out the memory of what's in that compartment, but you've got to expand a little beyond it, what happened before, what happened after, and it helps to, to actually bridge it. So by writing out their memory with those kind of, of details um, in mind is, is a, definitely a way that a person is going to be able to recover from childhood trauma, um, childhood sexual abuse, um, possibly even occultism to quite a large degree without any help. If someone can't get to their memories and they, they know that they're, that they're dissociative of them and know that um, 10 years have passed that they're not aware of or something like that, they're going to most likely need help, especially to get started. After they get started, they're still going to be able to do the deprogramming process on their own by writing out their memories for, for the most part. But if they need a therapist to help them get started, they need one that is skilled in NLP, one that knows the language of the subconscious, and one that will teach them how to think rather than what to think. So how do they write out that which you were talking about? Yeah. What do they do with it then? Uh, the best thing to do is put it away, wait about three weeks, and let them look at it again, um, and then uh, ask them uh, if after they've looked at it again, say, do you remember writing any of this? Does this seem familiar to you? And if they say yes, say, um, is there, was there in any way, uh, uh, can you make any association? Can you explain or, or write down? Don't, don't let them verbalize, okay? They got to write down if they had any olfactory sense about it, in other words, smell or taste. Um, if they can smell and taste a memory, and it's the same one three weeks in there, nah, very good chance I'd give it a higher and upper 90 percentile that is a real one. Now, I've, I've been fooled and then gone in and found out that um, roughly a dozen motion pictures were responsible for somebody's memories. Um, when they're astounded by their own memories, that's usually not quite right. What the way it happens is it's yeah. like they knew it all along. Well, of course I knew that. You know, it's a, it's a, it's a thing like, yeah. well, yeah. You if know, they're astounded by it. It feels, yeah, it's, it's different. That's removed from it rather if, than within. If, so. if, if, it, if that's the best example, Kathy, thank you. Because when somebody is, when they say, didn't I tell you that? You know, oh boy. Now, you say, don't tell me anything, write it down. Well, I've written it down. Where? Well, go show me. Well, uh, I can't find it. I said, well, write it down again. And then once they've written it down, it's there forever if it's real. If it's not, they, they'll have a flaw here, a flaw there. It's called screen memory or it's called lying or it's, or it's called somebody's trying to trick you. It'll be quite detailed when it's real. Thanks, guys. So much. Thank you. Thank you, buddy. I was just uh, thinking about TV shows and uh, movie programs that they put out. Uh, example, I guess, soap operas and that, and how far-fetched their stories can be. Mm -hmm. Yet uh, some of them have mind control in it, and they. Do you Are think that they end up? Do you think they kind of sh uh, make? I mean, when you're growing up, your parents always tell you, you know, it's all make-believe. All the movies, all the TVs. Just make believe, you know. Well, unfortunately, none of it's really true. Do you think that's a way that somebody is trying to like tell us a little bit of the truth, or or try to make us at least believe brings that up it doesn't the topic and gives a person a, a the ability to ask the questions? That's a good start. That's a really good start. Art imitates life. Unfortunately, for the past 40 years, there's been an active movement by several intelligence communities working in tandem to desensitize uh, the last two generations, and without going into depth, once you desensitize someone, uh, you, you, you are really setting them up for a future of, of 
mass manipulation through the media, through music, through any, any medium. Um, uh, whenever you see a country devoted, uh, devoting more of its time to sports um, <laughs> than they are uh, going to, uh, voting or talking about human rights issues or, or anything dealing with, with life in general, um, when you see these giant, giant sports things occurring, and then you'll see uh, somebody like Ralph Nader come to town, and he is an audience of 1,000 people uh, at best, and then uh, telling you the absolute truth, and then you turn right around, there's some idiot telling about um, how he managed to catch a 40-yard pass. Uh, you know, um, that's... That's what Adolf Hitler did, and it just—it's in—it's just an indication of what's happening. But the arts do save us from, in one regard, is because they're putting into the motion pictures, like the Riddler and Batman. Uh, the Riddler and Batman explains exactly how he was conditioned to be who he was. Um, in neurolinguistics, uh, that uh, that Riddler theme. And getting into that is the next level of NLP. And yes, I know how to do it. And yes, I know exactly how to start the deprogramming process using that. But um, uh, bottom line is there's been tons of movies out there, and Mind Control has become the third most popular sub-theme in uh, motion pictures and soap operas and... Um, uh, I understand it's even becoming more popular um, everywhere, all over the world. So, yes, the arts are getting it out there because art imitates life. Next one. Thank you. Uh, I'm hoping that your understanding of uh, uh, frequency and, and vibrations may give me a clue as to... Uh, give me a clue as to what's been happening uh, in my life for the last year and a half. Um, I live on a very quiet, remote island and I value uh, the quiet. I like to wake up in the morning and hear the Tweety Birds uh, to start my day. About a year and a half ago, I started to notice when I was going to sleep and when I was waking up in the morning that I had a hum in my mind. I was hearing a hum. And I'll make that sound, just so that you know. It goes like this. Mm -hmm. It drops. Okay, that's called a Taos hum. Go ahead. It's, it's an actual phenomenon. Oh, it is. Created? Yes. Because I've had uh, all sorts of tests in, uh, on my ears, and they seem Pleasure to be hard. they're good. <laughs> no, but no, you're, there's a whole city in Taos, New Mexico. Um, they finally got <laughs> they finally got one of the greatest criminals in in my country, um, uh, who's a congressman, and blah blah blah, to have to address it before Congress. Because, uh, you know, they, they wrote them off as wavies, and they wrote them off as this, and wrote them off as that, but it's occurring globally. And um, if you're in the path of this, I'm so sorry, because knowing what you just said, I value getting away from it. Um, yeah. Oh, man. You're in the pathway of it. What is the pathway? How, well, I don't know. I, I don't really have a clue. I could look it up. It, it's out on the net. Look up Taos, T A. O S, hum. Just plug that in, uh, the superhighway, and then use your own discernment uh, to track it. But if you'll look at the hearings that went on in Washington, it'll take you to there, you know, and all kinds of stuff. All this stuff's published, uh, and it'll give you some idea, and then you can maybe find out where the grid pattern is. Um, but uh, it's very real, and you are hearing it, and it is quite annoying, and I don't know what it does to our health. Um, I have only heard it on two places on this planet. And I'm not going to give that up because it's tied to something else and I don't want to get in trouble. Well, I hear it here. Uh, one, one of the things that I wanted to uh, test was whether from the coast to here it's, it, it existed. And it's a very constant hum on the coast. Up here it's a, it's a warbling hum. It's a as opposed to Right, right, right. Um, so the pathway is as wide as certainly from here to the coast. You realize it, um, it is... It's stronger, you know, in some places than in others. And you got mountain ranges and you got all kinds of uh, mineral deposits uh, that affected you, uh, particularly iron ore deposits. Uh, uh, there's a number of factors that causes the, the change of the auditory of being able to hear it. 
and not everybody can hear it. Um, <laughs> that was the trouble, you know. That's why the, the government got away with it, labeling everybody as nuts in this New Mexico town um, until uh, they actually got the press in there. And the press is, so what? I hear it, you know. What is that? And all of a sudden, I don't know what it is. What's it doing? I don't know. Where's it coming from? I don't know. Well, um, there's a whole lot of places it's coming from. And I can't really answer the questions about what it's used for other than super secret communications. That's bottom line of what it's for. It's not trying to program you or or give you brain cancer. It's some kind of Drive communication. Driving me crazy? <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Uh, the people that are super sensitive to it, man, I'd feel sorry for them. It's like being super sensitive uh, to electromagnetics. I'm not, but oh my goodness, when the power goes out from one of those southeastern United States storms and my house is totally without power, it's like somebody took a giant anvil off of me. I go, oh man, we got to get out of here. <laughs> Every time it happens. But uh, that's... I'll just tell you one thing. Uh, I started to ask around a little bit. <laughs> Uh, you know, do you hear a hum? And uh, <laughs> <laughs> and uh, four four people so far uh, have said they do hear this hum, including a young boy. I was talking to his dad, and the boy says, "Yeah, I've been hitting myself. Oh, sorry, hitting myself in the head for about a year trying to make it go away." Bless so, his heart. So uh, it certainly if, if affects some people more than others. It really irritates me, but I've decided to take it as a challenge and somehow well, uh, be able to live with it. I'm hoping that it's not. I don't think it's really, if it was really dangerous, those scientists living in the areas that know what it is in New Mexico, in particular, near White Sands, if you hear me, they would all move Unless somewhere else. something that counteracts it in their local uh, vicinity. No, no, no. There's no counteracting. And uh, there's no <laughs> shielding. There's no nothing. It's, um, it's part of the Earth's elect electromagnetic grid that's being used for global or perhaps... Uh, some sort of communication with satellites. Who knows? I don't know all those technical things. All I know is it's for communications, and it is real, and it is documented. Okay, well, you've certainly given me a big clue, although I don't know if it helps. Thank you. Yes, sir. Thank you. Folks, we're going to have to wrap this up, but uh, every... Oh, God, these questions are seriously... Good. Yeah, they are. <laughs> Last one? No, we'll take... Uh, who's... I, how many more we got? Three. Four. Three. Four. That's it. No four, more. Not four. Four. I never talked into one of these things before. Okay. Uh, I never talked into one of these before. In here? Yep. Huh? Uh, <laughs> I know what you mean about the electricity, and some other people might know too. I don't have electricity in my house, and when I. Uh, Ooh, you live a good life. When I go to somebody's house and the refrigerator's running and the lights are on and the, those fluorescent lights, you can't hardly sleep. Oh, yeah. Anyways, what I wanted to say was uh, back and way up, I went, to the, I went to school in the 50s and 60s, and I don't know how relevant it is now, but I got a feeling by everybody that spoke before that uh, this mind control is in the schools because the silly... Uh, history books are total bullshit. So, uh... That's kind of the way I feel. <laughs> well, what, Thank I, you. what I think I, what I want to say is um, I think as parents and everyone concerned, we should make books like what Hustis Mullins writes. Really? To the point and exactly true available to the kids and have them, have them where they can see them. Especially the federal. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, because we, if we if we don't know our history, we're doomed to repeat it. Exactly. I'm sure. Okay. Sure <laughs> Thanks for coming, guys. Thank you. Doing an awesome Thanks. job. Thank you. You know, um, <clears throat> I'm a positive guy, and I hate to dwell on the negative. You know how it is. <laughs> <laughs> and uh, I um, just wondering if you might want to comment uh, for the benefit of the crowd um, in the event that they may be surfing the net in the near future. If you might want to comment on one Bryce Taylor, 
I'd rather not because, quite frankly, I want to tell you something. I have turned over some information that has, I got some physical um, uh, documentation that she's put out, and I turned it over to the lawyer. I'm very seriously, I'm not going to take time away from what I'm doing. I've never sued anybody in my entire life, but I, I'm, I'm definitely considering stopping her permanently with a lawsuit because of defamation of character and a number of other things. I have hard proof. I have tape recordings. I have everything. This woman, uh, her name is Sue Ford, and she lived in my home, and she was supposed to be getting information to write uh, novels about that had nothing to do with um, anything other than mind control. And the first one, first one on the cover, it says, <laughs> I escaped from mind control. Bingo. Gotcha. Remember, just remember, if you don't escape, you can't think. No, it's not mind control. It's called abuse. Okay, well, don't, I don't get into that. I don't want any more. Uh, I really appreciate you asking me that, Wes. I know. It's probably the most sensitive thing on <laughs> You'll earth. You'll kill me later. But I know, but I, <laughs> I'm looking at it from a legal standpoint, and I can tell you if it were not for the media problems that I'm having to endure right now, I was, I had already written it up and turned it over to the two of our lawyers, and I handed them what I've got, and they said, good Lord, um, this is nonsense, it's got to stop. And it keeps, it's just a, one of those snotty little subjects that keeps resurfacing that I'm going to do something about. Um, and I despise courts, but in this case, uh, it's a cut and dried thing. Um, uh, the claims uh, are not relevant to the, to the truth, period, end of statement. It's truth that makes us free, and any misinformation can actually further lock people who want to recover can lock them in to um, the compartmentalization even further. So it, it's actually been an extreme detriment to some people that really truly want to survive and, and overcome the abuse that they've been through. Um, she's, of course, um, Sue's not the, Sue Ford's not the only one with misinformation. There's misinformation out there on, on so many, many topics. And it's so important that we all do our due diligence and research things further. When you know the components of mind control, what it really entails, then it's easy to see how, how books like that are misinformation, how um, people that, that speak f without um, uh, the truth behind them, it's easy to be able to discern that. But you yourself need to be armed with facts and do some research and look into things so that you'll be able to make some some clear discernment for Technology, yourself. Technology, uh, according to Albert Einstein, is going to get us all. I mean, it's, it's going gonna, it's gonna to kill mankind off as, as we know it if, if we don't control technology. Now, um, with all that being said, we got, uh, what, two more? That's Thank it. you, guys. Okay. Thanks, Wes. I'll be back next year. <laughs> Hope I have a new back <laughs> next year. Mark, you talked about, during your address to us, you mentioned something about something that was in Australia. Uh, the biggest one was in Australia. You know what I'm talking about? Yes. So that, there was five or six or seven places. And then you never said what it was. It That's right. is the world's most secret base uh, military installation that the United States has. And it's not in the United States. And lucky you, it's not in Canada. Uh, it is in the middle of a desert desert in the middle smack dab in the middle of Australia in a place uh, near Alice Springs near Ayers Rock I'm sorry near Ayers Rock Alice Springs is near Ayers Rock right correct 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 and the aboriginals have taken all that back I'm glad for them um, bottom line is uh, this this facility is known as Pine Gap um, right now on the net, they're circulating a lot of pictures they say were taken from Russian satellites and put up there. Uh, and this guy's <laughs> making all these claims. The pictures are quite accurate, but they're two years old. Okay? Because they're in one of the pictures that shows a crane building one of the antennas for tracking, actually, uh, the, the, the uh, shuttle, space shuttle. Oh, that's the benign stuff. The bad stuff is on top of it. What you see on top of the ground um, is just totally benign stuff. Camouflage. It's camouflage. It's what's underneath. 
the ground. And Area 51 is where they want you to look uh, at, in Nevada. Area 51 is a joke compared to what they got at what they call Area 52. And that isn't because there's no security in Area 51 anymore. They can't, they can't even fly a stealth fighter out of there without 10,000 people photographing it. Um, <laughs> I mean, it's a, it's the funniest. They laid tours. If you've been to Las Vegas lately, there's you billboards, you know, tours. Oh my God. I, I mean, it's it's awful. Uh, they have no security whatsoever. It's over. It's finished. Kaput. I think it's a gas. But they moved. They, these evil rascals moved all this stuff to the middle of Australia. And what they've got there has scared the bejeebers out of some of the most important scientists that I had the luxury of interviewing from my bed for a month, uh, and these people were streaming in and scaring the living fire out of me with with uh, the most horrible stories I ever heard, and then showing me hard evidence, you know, and I'm going, I'm just wincing um, like the psychiatrist that talked to me about Ward 1, and I'd heard about Ward 1, that was the ward that if anybody saw technologies that they weren't like they were construction worker. I mean, there's huge, I mean, it's like the honeycomb, the earth's honeycombed underneath there. Um, with, with, and there's several thousand people working in shifts down there. Well, if, if somebody were to uh, accidentally see something, they went to Ward 1. And these, this psychiatrist, even though they were in charge of this little bitty mental health facility uh, to take care of the people, um, they said, that um, they weren't allowed to go into Ward 1. And I said, why? And they said, because those people's minds were literally erased in a matter of seconds. Okay? One man, this is a story that's absolute documented fact, got the documents. Ta-da. One man, one time, one psychiatrist in charge of Ward 1, I got testimony. Got I've got records. I got everything. The United States, he supposedly went berserk down in the bowels of this Pine Gap facility. He went berserk or did something stupid. I don't know what happened. But anyway, that in the Skytrus didn't either. Not really clearly, but they were told that he went berserk and had a certain nervous breakdown. The United States sent. Hear me. The United States sent from Hawaii, <laughs> a C-5A. A C-5A is, I guess, the largest aircraft on the face of this planet. Picked this one little bitty guy up. They flew in there. They did not take any other cargo out. They had nothing else in that airplane. I, I don't know what you all know about the cost of flying one of those things per hour, but it is more than most of us will have in a lifetime <laughs> earned. Uh, uh, for a trip just to Australia from Honolulu, where this thing was stationed, to take one man out. I don't know who this guy was. They gave me enough information to where I will know, and it's going to go into a documentary. Uh, this is a very important part, piece of the puzzle. But I'm telling you, it is absolutely the most it goes way beyond science fiction, what these people were telling me. And now these are, are, well, one of them happened to be a rocket scientist. One of them happened to be a construction worker with the Department of Defense clearance, U.S. and Australian, who had retired. And um, his, his agreement uh, was such that he could talk about certain things, but other things he couldn't talk about. So he was telling me about stuff he could talk about. There was a hole in his in agreement, so to speak, kind of like there was with mine. The stuff that he was telling me was kind of scary. Now, none of these people knew each other, okay? None of these psychiatrists uh, knew each other. Uh, they, they knew of each other maybe professionally about something that they, some paper they'd had. Uh, the, the, um, the military contractor... The military contractor was, in fact, um, uh, very informative, and he confirmed, more or less, some technologies that I had heard about from extremely reliable sources. 
but that doesn't mean anything to me. I hear about stuff all the time. Unless I get a three-way, unless I see some proof, as far as I'm concerned, um, it's just it's just rumors. Um, but once I see that, and I see proof, it's not a rumor anymore, and then I'll talk about it. Well, that's why I'm talking about this little piece right now. But what's happening in Pine Gap and what's happening in a, a place just out of South Africa and at what was going to happen at our uh, Air Force Base in the Philippines, it didn't, and may be happening at, at uh, military one of the U.S. Air Force military bases or naval bases, not sure, in Japan, um, is, is information that I've gotten more than three ways on from people who are, are accredited, okay? They're entitled, they were there, hard proof. And it is absolutely terrifying, the technologies that have been developed. Uh, <sighs> I was completely overwhelmed. Why the bad guys haven't used it on us yet remains a total mystery to me. But when and if they do, they're going to get themselves too. I think that's the only reason it hasn't been used on a mass scale yet. But they can certainly use it on, uh, on large areas of North America, large areas of South America. And by the way, you heard it right here. You're going to see something happen in the country of Colombia um, that is going to blow your mind very shortly. Um, the, they're, they're in total revolution down there. But why they're in total revolution is, a, is some things I'm hoping that these film people and other film people pick up on and actually get, at, get it out there. I'm going to turn this film company on to some people um, that are intelligence insiders that will provide them with everything they need to know and all the hard proof and all the documentation and first-hand stuff from newspaper editors in Bogota, blah, 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 blah. And, and uh, we hope, we're we hoping that the real news will get out there. Uh, but uh, we got a lot of problems, folks. Next. <laughs> the last one, Mark. <laughs> All right, buddy. <laughs> well, this has to do with... Uh, That's the last, huh, Rick? Well, yeah, you know, these, these, these questions are all related to what I want to talk about just for a second. Uh, are you familiar a lot with the EMP weapons and EMP technology? Yeah, I thought they were really scary until, <laughs> until yeah, recently. Until the stuff you just saw. On oh, toy yeah, that's toys. <laughs> yeah, I'm just going to make a comment. There are people like Eleanor White out of Hamilton and others like her, and as you know through the, the Internet, we're, we're meeting hundreds of people that are coming out of the closet saying they're being attacked by the quote-unquote CIA uh, with these different weapons. Not really know what's going on, but they do know the effects that they're having on their mind and body. I just want to know if you could comment on that, Mark. Yeah, I'll, I'll comment on it from, uh, let's say, three and a half, four years ago. I was hearing this, and, and huge, huge, huge. I mean, a lot of psychiatrists, psychologists were calling me and asking me, what is this? I don't know. Let's find out. Well, um, shielding from e uh, ELF waves uh, is, um, is quite easy, actually. Uh, reinforced concrete. Uh, just find a building that's got maybe uh, four or five floors of uh, parking level under underground. Go down there and see if you hear it. Because if you still hear it, you've got something else going on in your head. But some people have been targeted, and God knows how many, been targeted with weaponry that is not related to that. It's something else. But that's the rumor that the CIA is circulating around. And why, I don't know. Uh, this is silly stuff. Uh, the CIA spends a whole lot of time on disinformation and misinformation, just keep people confused, I guess. But what the stuff that Eleanor White's talking about, I'm familiar. And um, I'm, I'm also familiar that it is quite accurate in some cases. And it's, it's really scary why they would target some of these people. But the first wave of these people that I saw, I only saw two that were credible out of about a dozen. And, and those two that were credible, we, we actually did get them in a test situation that their doctors did and their families did, and sure enough, they were being targeted. But they were being targeted with something else on their brain stem, and we found out why, you know, there's a reason for everything. And when somebody just out of the clear blue sky um, that has no history of, of any contact with the intelligence community or, or any history with government abuse or being involved, working for any kind of government, um, 
just for no reason at all and hadn't seen anything, you know, housewife or something, and all of a sudden they start making those kind of claims, uh, the, you begin to wonder, you know, if it's not mass hysteria or something. Uh, but, um, yeah, that's quite real, Rick, unfortunately. Now, for that last closing tidbit, I got some really good news for you. This is a, this is very serious. Within organizations like the United Nations, and I'm going to cite them, there have been a number of elites who have been working for a long, long time, for many, 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 many years to get us into this one world government. I think this one world government is not going to make it. I think that I believe that humanity may indeed take back control, but they'll turn it over again if we don't stay vigilant. Now, here's a good piece of news that I ran into. Within the United Nations, there are super secret organizations that were formally, or there are chapters of, of active too, uh, I can't tell you the names. I cannot do that. I can't blow their cover. But they are indeed um, being subversive, and they are tearing the United Nations, International Monetary Fund, every one of the organizations that are supporting this one world government global effort, they're tearing it to shreds from the inside. And the elitists at the top are absolutely panicked, total panic. That's the reason they're, one of the reasons they're trying to push uh, Bush into place down south and Cheney. Well, the rest of the world uh, knows, knows that Cheney is a, quote, warmonger. Remember, I, I, I hope I enunciated that right. <laughs> Sorry, honey. But uh, Cheney is recognized as a warmonger. So um, that's the reason that this, our story broke is because we happen to be in the right place at the right time, not knowing anything, just trudging along, doing all of our seminars all over this planet, uh, except for Europe, and we were, going, we were planning to do some of those next year. And then all of a sudden, out of the clear blue sky, I'm approached by some organizations who I consider some of the most evil people on earth. I've been yakking about them for years. Now I can't say a word. Um, they approached me and asked me if I wanted to be a member. I said, you what? <laughs> I said, who are you? And so they showed me. And then they showed me more. And then they showed me more. I said, uh, one of us has gone completely mad. And, and they said, you've said it a thousand times. I said, what? They said, no enemy is so dangerous as the one who stands right next to you. I said, I said, are you telling me that you have infiltrated the UN? You've infiltrated some of the most elite organizations uh, that most people associate with the Illuminati and another one of other uh, super secret ancient organizations that are, are really, honest to God, real and out there? And he said, yep. <laughs> I said, and you want me to be a member? Yep. I said, no, <laughs> I'll pass on this one. You guys keep up the good work. I said, no, no. I said, uh-uh. I said, if you're for real, I'm going to find out. Oh, my God, I found out the guy was not only for real, but I found out that it's a huge movement, and just nobody knows about it yet. And there are these, I mean, huge amounts of money. We're talking billions of dollars, U.S. dollars, I'm writing it in, um, that are now being used against the uh, upper elite. Don't, don't relax your grip. Keep going to the pace you're going at. It's time. It's time. The turn of the tide is occurring, and this is going to be one of the most interesting periods in, in mankind's history, but it is also, I think, going to be one of the scariest. Now, if my dear friend uh, sitting on this front row is, is going to give a, a nice prediction on this one, I'd love to hear it. But I ain't gonna bet with you because I ain't gonna bet against humanity. Uh, 
I ain't. I don't know how the cards are going to fall, but I can tell you right now, the elite organizations and some of the most horribly corrupt ones that have been around for hundreds and hundreds of years are now turning around the other side. They're on our side because they, they're monsters eating them alive. And they found out that it's just a handful of people that are in control. And, and what they have planned for humanity is not even human. And I'm not suggesting these people are from another galaxy. I wish they were and it would just go back. <laughs> but I wish they were some kind of lizards that we could open season on. But unfortunately, these are human beings with absolutely totally devoid of any social conscience. And we just, and our job is real simple. All we got to do is bring those guys down uh, through simple exposure of dissolving things like the National Security Act and some of these immoral treaties that we've got set up. And all of a sudden, I find out there are people that can do these things, and that's what they're working on. And, and so every one of us in this room uh, is playing a very small part in a major change. And yes, unfortunately, this tent has not got 50,000 people in it. And I bet you there are places all over this planet that right now are playing some kind of sports where they got well in the ten thousands of spectators sitting there gaga and over somebody carrying a piece of uh, pig skin around. I, I, I'm sorry, I don't like organized sports. Um, I just can't deal with the idea of wasting my time on that. Let's overflow but, this tent next year. Let's keep. Let's keep talking, let's keep spreading the word and make a difference. God bless you all and thank you.